everyone, and welcome to, a, I want to say this, a live season finale spoiler review here from the Geek Buddies! <gasps> hey! Well, yeah. we haven't been live in quite some time, so excited to be back live with you all here. 3 p.m. PT on the Outlaw Nation channel is going to be exciting for us. For those of you who maybe uh, love it on the podcast format, you're going to get it a little bit later on in the evening when I drop it on the podcast format. But today, for the next uh, 90 minutes or so, we're going to break down what if the season finale. We're going to answer your questions, your Streamlabs, your Super Chats. Start sending in your Streamlabs. Start sending in your Super Chats. We're going to get to all of them as we go on breaking this thing down. You know how we break it down if you're a fan of the Geek Buddies section by section. But let's introduce ourselves first. I am the outlaw, John Roker, writer, producer, and host here on the Outlaw Nation channel and on the Geek Buddies. Mike. I am Michael Vogel, writer and producer of animated TV shows. And since I cannot Sunday fun day out in West Hollywood, I poured myself a drink so that I can Sunday fun day <laughs> right here with all of you. Shannon. Oh, this is Shannon McClung. I'm an animation writer and a television actor where you may have seen me on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Silicon Valley, and Modern Family. And I did not remember to pour myself a drink. Oh, man. I, I've got it in this cheap witch witch cup, but there's a drink in here. That's for damn sure. <laughs> That's how we do it here in the suburbs. Witch witch. We can't hang out with like Mikey with the nice tumblers. This is what I get. A plastic <laughs> cup. Hey, man. Uh, witch witch is delicious. Yeah, it is damn good. That's for sure. <laughs> and if you want to sponsor the Geek Buddies witch witch, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, oh anyway. Back to that again. Back to that more of that. <laughs> You got, you know, uh, my friend Jeff Snyder once said this to me. He said, "Close mouths don't get fed." So, um, all right, we're gonna jump into this thing here. As I said, we're gonna break it down <laughs> section by section. We're gonna start with our overall thoughts. And for those of you who have not seen the episode, this is a spoiler review. So, once again, spoiler review. If you haven't seen the episode, please go and watch it and come back and watch the rest of this after we've posted it. But for those of you joining us live, and already we're at ninety people joining us live, thank you so much. Please remember to hit that like button as we go along, the like button. We want to get as many likes as possible on this video live so it'll attract more people to come and, and enjoy watching us live as we talk about this episode. Michael, let's start with you. Finally, shout out to everybody who's joining us right now. we got people joining us from uh, Seattle, from Madison, Indiana, from a number of places. So shout out your city, shout out your countries if you're hanging out with us. I'll give you shout outs as we go along. Michael. Overall thoughts here. We end episode nine, an odd to end on an odd number episode for for a, for a season, but we end on this episode nine. So much happened here. Everything culminated in this multiverse, this Guardians of the Multiverse storyline. What did you think about this overall episode and as a way to end this entire first season of What If? Well, I mean, odd that you bring up the odd number of episodes because mm. I think I think it was a great season finale. I think it delivered on exactly what we all wanted. Mm. And the only reason that it wasn't a thousand percent satisfying to me is because it's the ninth episode and not the tenth, which means that we lost the Gamora and Tony yes. Stark episode. So right. clearly what we now know is that What If was supposed to be ten episodes uh, for COVID reasons, for scheduling reasons. They just couldn't get that one done. So they didn't have that done. So... I think that the only thing that wasn't totally satisfying and we'll hit it at different points throughout is whenever yeah. it got to a Gamora based thing or her machine that could destroy infinity stones, it always felt a little bit like, eh, okay. Yeah. Where did but this come we, from? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, and I think if we had seen those episodes, it would have worked as well as mm. anything else. So I don't really ding them for it. It was just like, there was a couple moments where I was like, I feel like this, this should have hit harder. This should have felt bigger. Mm. And I was like, eh. Okay, and then you found out that it was because that episode didn't exist. And I hope that means that season two of What If is 11 episodes. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that. But a ton of stuff to love. Great interplay between the characters. Um, if you are not a fan of the giant Marvel third act uh, action blowouts, <laughs> then maybe this wasn't your episode. But right. uh, as far as Marvel third act action blowouts go, this one really went for it. So yeah. uh, I was very happy. I can't wait to talk about all the specifics that I thought were really... Uh, thrilling and marvelous yeah. yeah it's good nick wingard is the voice of iron man and tony stark uh would have been nice to see him do a little bit more we do get one scene with him but a little bit more would have been fun as michael points out to have got a 10th episode would have been cool all right from honolulu rockville marin maryland panama city panama portland Oregon. we've got a number of people chiming in let's go to shannon mcclung who's from orlando florida shannon mcclung you tell us what you thought of this season finale for what if uh, here as you finished. Well, I'm sure you've watched it two or three times already. What is your overall feeling about it now? 
Uh, across the board, I, th- I thought the series was a home run. I mean, mm. I would go as far to say, uh, even though we're only, what, four series in now to the yeah. Disney plus Marvel shows, um, this is this is one of their best. And granted, you know, you only got four four to compare it to. Um, but I was yeah, I mean, from beginning to end, I really enjoyed the series. I mean, there were definitely episodes that I liked more, um, but I thought the finale was very very satisfying i mean i do agree with mike i mean the moment that we see gamora it's sort of like hey wait a second like we we didn't get we didn't get this episode and i actually read um an interview with uh, ashley bradley Mm -hmm. on comicbook.com where she explained what did happen that uh what happened with the gamora episode there was originally supposed to be early on in the season a tony and gamora centric episode however the covid and production delays one of our amazing amazing animation houses around the globe got hit pretty hard by the pandemic and we were left with two choices push the entire season to later this year push this one episode to season two we made the choice to push that episode to season two and hope that seeing gamora in the finale serves as a teaser for what is to come in season two it'll almost be like a little bit of a prequel we'll see how tony and gamora became friends because those two don't even interact in the main mcu universe oh that's but, a good point yeah 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 so that was on okay. comicbook.com interview with okay. ac bradley okay uh, any fi- okay so that's your overall thoughts on this thing just you thoroughly loved it uh would yeah. like to have seen the other episode with iron man and gamora yeah well i guess the one thing i would add okay. is again looking like i went ahead i didn't i don't even know if we're gonna get to this i went ahead and ranked my episodes um but, Ooh, but going through good idea. going through and 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 watching clips and, and bits and pieces again Thor in this universe is just my favorite. He <laughs> he has some of the funniest moments in this, yeah, yeah. and Chris Hemsworth proves that he doesn't even de- he doesn't even need to be on camera to make us laugh because he he his yelp his multiple yeah. yelps in this episode, which has already become a gift that I believe Vogel used on Twitter, <laughs> so freaking funny. Oh yeah, I I mean along those lines, I do think, and this is a. If I was going to critique something and it just is what it is, it's the balance of everything, You, this is a 35-minute episode, so yeah. it's a pretty packed episode. But if anything, I would have loved a little bit more time before uh, Ultra Vision showed up mm. uh, just to have more interplay with these characters. Uh, for Dark Doctor Strange, Captain Carter, uh, yeah. you know, Killmonger and T'Challa being in a room together when T'Challa, when Killmonger had already killed the T'Challa in his universe. Like, yeah. there was just so much um, interesting dynamics that you could have played that they just didn't have time for. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't ding them for it. Like, they had a lot to get through and they really wanted to deliver on a big action, uh, you know, Avengers, mm-hmm. Guardians level kind of action sequence. And so they really did. But, man, they... They did such a nice job developing these characters throughout the season that, if anything, I could have just watched them all sit in that pub and talk for another, like, five minutes. Yeah, I don't disagree with you at all. I thoroughly enjoyed the episode. Love those interactions with them. I would have liked to have had more as well, Mike. It did strike me as weird that we weren't getting a T'Challa... Um, uh, a Killmonger scene where they had a conversation about stuff until the end where he was like, give me the stones, cousin. You know, there was that little bit of a moment where you saw T'Challa from any universe talking to Killmonger from any universe and seeing that uh, connective tissue there would have liked to would have been nice to see a little bit more of that. I do yeah. hear also the worry, the concerns about not getting too much with Tony and with Gamora having needing that to kind of flesh out a little bit more of what we're going to hear. But I will say this. I love the fact that they were able to pick what they wanted out of certain episodes and put that all together and make it work. And we're going to get to the opening here where he's a watcher selecting, but I really enjoyed the hell out of that. And certain things surprising me like the zombies and stuff like stuff coming back into play that were big parts of other episodes, but were just quick things that they used in this episode, but really worked. And they laid the groundwork enough for you to go, Oh shit, that's cool. Or, Oh damn. I didn't even think about that. So all of that really worked for sure for me. And I loved the ending, this idea of needing to find a home, a, a, you know, a place to belong, right? Don't we all want to feel that? So the mm-hmm. universality of that theme at the end was also great as well. And that post credit scene, whoo, that post credit scene, which, which we're going to talk about once again. All right, so we got 150 all watching. We're about to jump into it now. We're going to go section by section. Last warning, this is a spoiler review. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Come back and watch it with us and start sending in your Streamlabs. I'm going to put, it's in the chat. 
It's on the, on the screen right now. It's in the description of this video, and I'm going to put it as a banner as well. Start sending in your support. You'll love the Geek Buddies. Send in some support as we're going along today, uh, and, I'll, and we'll bring up your uh, questions and answer them on the show. All right, let's start off. Oh, well, first, let me drive one quick super uh, stream lab here from Fredtastic, who says, I must really love the Geek Buddies because my Cowboys are playing, and I'm watching this. Well, hey! thank you very much, Fredtastic, for putting the, your Cowboys on ice to hang out with us live. Uh, all right, let's start out with this. First <laughs> of all, uh, it's called What If the Watcher Broke His Oath. This is written by A.C. Bradley, directed by Brian mm -hmm. Andrews there. All right, we start off with basically we're doing the scene from Winter Soldier uh, with Captain Carter standing in for Captain America. Black Widow is on uh, the uh, plane as well, uh, and they're going after Batrock, uh, uh, and Black Widow tries to pitch Bernard in accounting, which I think is a really fun moment that we remember from Winter Soldier, and then even drops a Steve shot there just as Captain Carter jumps out of the plane, lands on that freighter, knocks everyone out, and then goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Batrock. I put here, I love the choreography in the animation in this fight section. I thought it was fantastic. Really became almost photorealistic in some of the movements, which I thought was great. Then out of nowhere, the Watcher shows up behind Batrock. It almost felt like she was doing a, hey, look over there the moment, but it was actually a thing that was there, which was the Watcher, and he chooses her. Then we cut to the Dairy Queen, where Ego is uh, basically sucking the life out of peter quill t'challa saves him which kind of which references of course an earlier episode so is t'challa or t'challa and the uh, ravagers going after ego here on earth apparently they are but he saves them uh and then the watcher shows up and chooses t'challa uh then we go to iron man and gamora who we just mentioned the we would like to have seen that episode they're getting a gauntlet and uh iron man's talking or stark is talking about putting a protective barrier around the world around the galaxy then the watcher shows up and selects gamora not you stark gamora uh then we cut to wakanda with shuri and pepper Potts battling their way to go confront killmonger shuri saying we're gonna deal with him in wakanda then you get him in the states but then killmonger of all people is chosen by the watcher as black panther then we go to thor who is battling some ultron sentries in Vegas, and this is a funny moment where Watcher chooses because he's constantly trying to interrupt Thor while he's throwing away his quips and throwing away all these Ultron sentries. And then finally, he grabs Thor and yanks him up. And I put the scream here is great and uh, matches the scream we got in Thor Ragnarok when he's going through that thing on Zakar. Uh, and then they end up uh, in the pub from Captain America First Avenger and the pub from the first episode of What If. Mm -hmm. Then Shannon's favorite character, Dark Tor Strange, shows up, and he has selected this pub, gives Thor a beer, kind of like he gives <laughs> Thor a beer in that post credit scene uh, from the MCU there, and the Watcher shows up to tell them that they've all been chosen for a mission to save everyone in the multiverse. You are the guardians of the multiverse. Thor says Loki put him up to it, steps out into a space vortex, then Captain Carter pulls him back and tells the Watcher that they're in. All right, Mike, hell of a beginning. I mean, this is essentially Magnificent Seven in like five minutes and selecting right. all <clears throat> these people to fight. This was fantastic, I thought, as an intro and got us into the vibe that this is these this is such an unusual team. But just like the Guardians of the Universe, the Guardians of the Multiverse are an unusual collection of people to come together to carry out this mission. What did you think about this intro? Well, first of all, Win uh, Winter Soldier is one of my favorite Marvel movies. So yes. kind of opening it on that opening scene from Winter Soldier, but with Captain Carter instead of Captain America was super fun. And I mm. also think it was important because as much as this episode was just delivering on all of the action that's been built up over the past uh, season, yeah. they really still needed to ground it in some kind of emotional moment. And I think kind of using this friendship between Captain Carter and Black Widow, which is very different than the dynamic between Black Widow and Steve in yeah. our universe, was really, really nice. And kind of using that as a really good through line throughout that got us to the final uh, the final battle with Ultron was mm -hmm. cool. Uh, and yeah, I just loved the interplay between them, the way you were saying, the way that it mirrored the opening scene in Winter Soldier, but her yeah. sort of teasing him about Steve kind of showed that, uh, I don't know that I don't know that Black Widow in Winter Soldier would have ever teased our Steve about no. Peggy, but like <laughs> they have that kind of vibe. I also liked that uh, Captain Carter's outfit in the opening just Ooh. like Steve's outfit in Winter Soldier right. was a kind of duller, more stealth version. It wasn't, she wasn't wearing the same outfit she wore in her first Avenger movie. Um, so, I mean, I think those little details, the shot for shot of her diving down, facing off against Batroc, like great way to sort of dive you back into this whole thing. And then mm -hmm. just getting those beats. Uh, the Gamora, Tony Stark part, 
I mean, we already spoke about how that was sort of, you know, the uh, the, the the random one for us mm-hmm. because of the reasons that Shannon explained. But I did like the little hints that we got in there that uh, that the Watcher called Gamora the survivor of Sakaar and right. destroyer of Thanos. So we know what's going to go down in that episode. And right. uh, the way that Tony, the armor that Tony's wearing, wearing has uh, this, the writing from Sakaar on it. Thought it was like really interesting stuff that made me intrigued about where we're going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know... I know that Tony didn't die in this episode, but boy, he probably wished he died after the Watcher threw that shade his way. Uh, I mean, I just love the, you know, he's like, I need, I need you. And Tony's like, let me tell you about this, uh, this, this, this armor around the world. And he's like, not you, Stark. You're, you're, you. I mean, poor, poor Tony in this series of what if, uh, I, I feel for him a little bit. Um, yeah, all the other like moments were great, kind of getting everybody together. Love that they chose the pub. I'm a big fan of any kind of magical world where they have something like really basic looking as mm. the magical space, and uh, a pub is a perfect place for that. And I just love the whole setup. I really love how the as uh, as the Watcher and Doctor Strange were explaining everything, they all sort of had that moment where they were like, "Okay, so you kidnapped us from across the galaxy to save the universe," is right. what you're saying. And they were like, "No, no, no, it's a little bit more complicated." Uh, we need you all to save all of the universes. And it really just, I mean, none of this is new information and we all kind of Mm. assume this is what was going to happen, but they executed it in such a fun way and they really built it up to what you wanted it to be. You're like, oh, this group of people are saving everything. Like this is for all the stuff. Uh, And I just thought it was a blast. It was a lot of fun. Like when you're doing something where you have to go through the beats at the beginning, of what the audience already knows is going to happen. Yeah. Sometimes it can feel a little bit like, come on, man, let's get to the next thing. <laughs> yeah. I think they just they just nailed making this as absolutely fun as possible. So watching what we knew was going to happen was still completely a joy. Yeah. Shout out real quick to Cal McCutcheon who says, I want the Stealth Captain Carter t-shirt. Absolutely. And Space Windu saying, oh my God, if he just fell dead right there from the burn, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> It's like uh, clunk. Or- <laughs> just, oh, man. Uh, Shannon, what did you think about this intro and uh, some of the points that Michael brought up here as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, again, Winter Soldier is a, a big favorite of mine as well. Mm-hmm. And the moment that we saw the Quinjet fly in, it was like, oh, okay. They were talking about the Lumerian Star. Like, oh, it's literally the beginning of, of Winter Soldier. And yeah, the first thing I noticed was her uniform. That, yeah. you know, that gray, that dark gray with the blue uh, uh, just just the coolest thing. And watching how she dove out of the plane, how she landed in the water, I mean, it was all ex- you know pitch- exactly the same as, yeah. as Steve did it. And I thought it was funny that Batroc in uh, this universe and the animated universe can grow a lot more facial hair than George St. Pierre can <laughs> in real life. <laughs> He's also yeah. more understandable with his English. But yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, the the recruitment, everything was awesome. I, I was so bummed to see that uh, Killmonger stayed bad. Stayed bad, but is about to lose in Wakanda. Mm. But the Watcher knows that they need him. And so grabs him. And of course, my favorite, the, 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 Thor, the Thor taking down the Ultron drones oh when he God. says nobody messes with Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> there were just so many moments that Thor had that made me double over. And then when the watcher grabs him and he's got that yelp, but also it's not just the oh. yelp, it's the Looney Tune shaking of the head. The, yeah. Ah! <laughs> just so incredibly funny. And uh, I, I, again, agree with Vogel about that, the sort of interstellar pub, the magical pub that the moment Thor walks out and it's, you know, it's just chaos outside. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought the setup for this was awesome. And, you know, I, I think we had talked about uh, uh, the episode before that, mm-hmm this next this finale is going to have to be long because they're going to have to cover a lot of ground and they did it in just minutes i mean and just super impressive uh great start to the episode yeah i also i also think just you know talking about Mm -hmm. this whole uh you using a little bit of time to affect a lot you know when we watched each of these episodes throughout the season and you ended with ego or you ended with shuri and pepper Potts, and we were all like oh is that going to be what season two is like is there more like are we going to see the continuation and i think they did such a great job of showing us that we don't need to see everything to enjoy everything like we saw for example shuri and pepper Potts kind of have that we're going to have to go after killmonger and opening up on that universe and seeing sort of 
Wakanda in ruins, the throne room destroyed, Killmonger clearly tried to make a play, probably killed T'Chaka, seeing mm-hmm. Shuri and Pepper Potts running in there together with everybody, like, it was like, you you got enough of the adventure to understand. Same with T'Challa, with Ego and Peter Quill and the Ravagers flying over a Dairy Queen. It's like, yeah. we didn't need the entire episode to go, oh, all right, awesome. Like, this universe, shit's going down. And yeah. so you still felt, like, this sense of completion from all the episodes that ended on cliffhangers without them having to go into some huge explanation, which I think is really just efficient storytelling. That's a great point. That's a great point. Real quick, uh, two streamlabs that came through here. G. Smith donated said, I know the review will be great as usual. Thank you, G. Smith. Very kind. Uh, and Fantastic through one in here says, The Watcher pulling Gamora away from Tony was excellent because he could have pulled anyone from anywhere, and I didn't need the backstory. It was a great surprise also my favorite line in all of what if was the watcher saying not you stark so yeah. there you go another one who's a fan of the burn from the watcher for sure so <laughs> uh yeah we're, we're at 100 almost 200 people here watching us live thank you very much we're moving into the second section of the show here please make sure you hit a like button uh and uh if you haven't subscribed to the channel subscribe to the channel as well and hit that bell button and the Streamlabs address is now right there at the bottom and also on the screen and the description of the chat. Send in your support, send in your questions. We'll answer them as we go along. All right, let's jump into the second section here. Uh, I also enjoyed the intro. I'll just leave it at that and I'll, I'll come back to it. All right, the watcher. <laughs> the Rogue watcher. Is like, Rogue is like, what did you guys think? And he's like, it was good. Let's move on. <laughs> it's good. It's great. It was, I, loved, I loved it. I got my points in. All right, the watcher tells them what they are up against, which is an attack by Ultron, explains who Ultron in is, explains the Infinity Stones and their connection. Strange says they need to separate his body from the stones. That's the plan. Thor, who's, of course, had a, a little too much beer now, asks for some Chinese food. They get him the Chinese food, which is a fun little joke about, hey, you picked him. Uh, Gamora has the Infinity Crusher to destroy the stones, which, as Michael pointed out, just came out of nowhere. So we're just accept- we have to accept this because we didn't get that episode. And the plan is to get the Soul Stone to Gamora. They end up on this planet without an- enough intelligent life. They all land there. Gamora watches Killmonger as he's as he messes with an Ultron uh, sentry's head, and he's just like she's like questioning whether we should trust him or not. Strange delivers a terrible toast to try to motivate the troops here that T'Challa saves him from. Thor sends out a lightning bolt in celebration, and guess who shows up? Ultron. And Thor says, "Hey, I warned you. I attract unwanted attention all the time." Uh, Strange throws out some non-compliant protection spells. Uh, Panther and Gamora head out through a portal. Thor ignores the plan that they had planned on, or did he, and attacks Ultron. Ultron sends Thor, Carter, Strange, and T'Challa into a rock pile, uh, but they are saved by the protection spell. Get up and attack Ultron. And I'm, I put this here, and I'm going to say this. I couldn't possibly do justice to the battle that goes on here, but let's suffice to say that T'Challa ends up with a soul stone. Strange attacks Ultron now. Ultron sees the stone is missing from his armor. Just then, Strange sends in a bunch of zombies through a portal to attack Ultron. And who shows up but Scarlet Witch Zombie? Nice play from a few episodes ago, bringing that in. So cool. to a, it, And the, she, she basically sets up to attack him, but then she gets this like kind of sad, scared look on her face, and it's Ultron blowing up the entire planet with all of them on there as Captain Carter and everyone is reunited through a portal on Black Widow's planet from episode eight. Just as Captain Carter throws a stone to Gamora, however, Black Widow shows up, intercepts it, and Captain Carter explains, calms Black Widow down, explains what they're doing, which disarms her, and Black Widow is now part of the plan. Uh, All right, uh, let's just stop there. Shannon, great stuff. Fantastic action here as they battle Ultron. I mean, this, this episode was just chock full of action. Really enjoyed the fun jokes about Chinese food, and you picked them, and yeah, damn right I picked them. But then we see a little more of the humanity of Strange not being able to deliver a toast. He, As dark as he may be, he still has like this human part of him that wants to connect with people, that wants to care for people, even though he's allowed himself to go to the dark side, which I thought was a nice redemption for him building on what happened at the end of the episode with Doctor Strange in episode four, I think. So what do you think about this section of the show here? I mean, Stephen Strange did not get his doctorate in toasts. I mean, to to watch him stammer and stumble all over himself, and then Thor, my 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 man Thor, comes in with the with the save with the Viva Viva Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, just just a blast. And you you know you get to see individually what they're all going to bring to the table. And 
this sort of encapsulates my my love of T'Challa when mm. he talks about and 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 to Mike's point earlier about not having necessarily enough time to kind of flesh out these moments. The moment that uh, T'Challa says, you know, when Yondu, Yondu calls him sticky fingers, yeah, and right. the the idea to Killmonger, like seriously, why wow, you really are from a different universe, like, and that the guy that I met. That guy wouldn't have stolen. Right. Um, I would have loved to have seen that moment where Killmonger has to see his cousin, the the person who he was responsible for their death mm -hmm. um, in, in another universe. Like that would have been a great moment to see. Um, yeah. Gamora, we're just sort of assuming that she is a quick study because just looking at Killmonger holding that Ultron drone head, she's kind of like, yeah. And asking Thor, do you trust him? And Thor, the big dope. Oh, what are you talking about? I trust everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 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 fight is great. Um, using a a uh, tidal wave of zombies oh. as uh, as a way to kind of uh, uh, prep Ultron for uh, for Scarlet Witch. I mean, I love the fact that Scarlet Witch and essentially Vision are fighting. It reminded me of yeah. episode three of uh, episode three, you know, episode four of uh, of WandaVision. Like you yeah. get to see this moment of these, you know, these two characters that we're used to yeah. seeing, you know, being uh, lovers, being partners, uh, getting ready to go up against each other. Um, yeah, I mean, the moment that Strange gave them all the uh, the protection spells, you're you're seeing sort of like it goes over the shield. They all get these cool headdresses. I mean, from a from a design standpoint, it yeah. was just so cool and just so much fun. And T'Challa in this universe, you know, he doesn't have heart of the what is it? Heart of the sacred heart of the sacred herb. Uh, right. he, he he doesn't have the stuff to right. make him Black Panther. Like he's literally just got he's got training and he's got wit and he's got gumption. And the fact that he is he is the one that's able to get the stole, uh, soul stone away from uh, Ultron. And there's a couple other moments where he rolls up on Ultron and just opens fire with his blasters. Mm, it's like, yeah. this is a guy who, you know, granted, he does have the protection spell, but I'm like, this is just a guy. And yeah. watching how that you don't need the heart of the sacred herb to be a hero uh, yeah. is just awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, Black Widow has the quietest motorcycle on the planet, apparently. No one saw it coming. No one heard it coming. Was able to slide in. Michael, what do you think about this section here and introducing the Black Widow element into this? You know, like you said, we didn't get Stark, who's got all the technology he's got, but Black Widow kind of throws herself into this. Do you think the Watcher saw this? Do you think that's why they ended up on this planet? Do you think that was part of his whole thing all along, considering how this episode ends? And also, what do you think of this section? Uh, I thought the section was great. I Like I said, I wish that we had had more time to just see them all hanging out. Mm. And so I think that campfire scene, like that was the moment where we got oh, to have point. those moments before yeah. they're just, you know, basically fighting for their lives. And so we got a couple of really nice bits. Uh, you know, we saw Dr. Strange's sort of inner monsters come out literally. Uh, and he and Captain Carter had like a really nice interplay where she was like, what happened? And he's like, the same thing that happened to you, love, which I thought was really, really oh, that nice. Is good. Yeah. Uh, Captain Carter found out that uh, uh, on Strange's universe, Steve became Captain America. So like, that was a nice bit of information. And like Shannon was saying, you know, Gamora just like took looking, taking one look at Killmonger with that Ultron head and being like, yeah, this is no bueno. <laughs> and like the fact that Thor trusts everybody. Another great character thing. I love when you can do a character thing really subtly. Uh, and aside from Doctor Strange's horrible, horrible toast uh, that T'Challa <laughs> thankfully saved him from, I loved the drink choices. Uh, they uh. were great. Um, Doctor Strange basically has, like, looks like a little martini with like, yeah. a lime garnish. It's a very Doctor Strange type of drink. <laughs> Thor obviously has beer. Uh, T'Challa's holding wine. Both Killmonger and Gamora just have shots because as warriors, they're like, just give me the stuff. And then Captain Carter, Peggy herself, has a drink that she apparently got from Applebee's. Like it is just <laughs> that oversized, super fruity <laughs> drink. And I love that Captain Carter <laughs> is a straight up badass. She's a super soldier, but apparently she loves drinks with funny names and umbrellas. And I thought that was absolutely not the coolest thing in the it's world. Awesome. Um, and so then like we get into the battle and yeah, it's great. Uh, Thor's whole Viva Las Vegas and then oh Ultron God. being like, I've never heard a battle cry quite like that. 
um, was just pure gold. And then, yeah, I, I can also, like John said, I can't do justice to the entire battle, but oh. it was on par. Yeah. Uh, granted, it's in animation, but it was on par with anything we saw in Infinity War or anything yeah, else. Like, I'd you know, it that. really reminded me a lot of the battle uh, trying to get the glove off of Thanos. Like, yep. it was very, very similar to that. Um, I loved Doctor Strange, like, when Thor Holt threw his hammer. I loved <sighs> Doctor Strange making, mm. like, the multiple hammers and them all coming in. Yes! I loved Carter, I loved Captain Carter uh, and T'Challa, like, flying up there together and Captain Carter sort of being the distraction and then riding a hammer back down so that T'Challa could get the soul stone. Like, there was just so many really great moments um, Doctor Strange dragoning up and having the dragons come out and Thor being like, you were hiding those the whole time? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, it was just so fun yeah. to see these characters that had been built up larger than lives in their individual universes getting to play together. And this is where... I agree with what somebody said uh, in the chat about, you know, I didn't necessarily need to see the whole Gamora Tony thing. Mm. It was like cool to just get that hint of it and the watcher could have chosen anybody. But this is where it would have been better. Like if doc if we had never had the Doctor Strange episode, for example, and all of a sudden a yeah, bunch of dragons and a bunch yeah. of dragons flew out of him, we would have been like, Okay, I guess that's a thing Doctor Strange can do. Right. But because we watch the episode, it means more. So I think, you know, I, I think that that's the one place where the Gamora stuff could have been stronger, but not really their fault. So I don't really ding them for it too hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all of the battle stuff was great. The zombie drop, awesome. And just the zombie drop plus, like mm -hmm. Thor being like, oh, zombies. Because Thor in that moment is like the audience. Like yes. Doctor Strange drops a bunch of zombies and you go, yeah, that's fucking good. That's smart. <laughs> Drop the zombies. And then when he's like, it's not the zombies. It's what came with the zombies. And then that reveal of Wanda was gold. And like Shannon said, Marvel clearly knows that we are all obsessed with Wanda and Vision. And they're going to just give us every single iteration of Wanda yeah. and Vision that they can possibly give us. And we will eat it up always, always, always. And then mm -hmm. to John's point, I do like that they brought it back to... Uh, Black Widow and the world, the universe that we were on mm. on episode eight, which in addition to getting us to that character of Black Widow and kind of tying up that loose end from that episode, I thought it was kind of nice to bring Ultron back to where he started. Just kind oh, of a yeah. poetic thing that Good the point. final battle in the multiverse is back on Ultron's home turf, which I thought right. was kind of nice. A nice way to unsettle him too. That's a great point yeah. actually, Mike, for sure. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed this section a lot. The battle secret, I think Mike is 100% correct and I actually make a note in the next section about how this is just as good as anything we saw in Infinity War or uh, or Endgame. Those sections of battles with Thanos, just as good as anything we saw. It's just incredible what the animation that has been able to do all season, but really come into the forefront in the battle sequences that, ex that were extended throughout this episode for sure. Uh, real quick, all right, uh, Luke donated to Streamlab here. He says, Geek Love from Dan Under. By the way, Thor's bravado and love of beer is 100% Asgardian and in no way Australian. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've met some Australians and I... <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say yes. Uh, all right, Chewy also donated. Hey, Chewy, y'all rock. Resident gay, represent and stay fab. Shannon, your vulnerability during the Snyder Cut review touched me. I've suffered losses in my life and you're a real bro. And Roca, horseman, stay awesome. Look forward to y'all each week. Oh, thank you, Chewy. That's very kind. Um, also, Vegetable Tube donated and said, I loved What If Season 1. The art is absolutely beautiful. It really yeah, is. For sure. Is there, Mike, do you know if there's a book coming? Usually there's a book that accompanies they, any animated thing. I I would be shocked if we did not get a book. Uh, I have like on my shelf in Shannon and Rokano because they've both been to my place. Like I collect those art of books. Oh like, yeah, they're like they're baseball cards. Like I love an art of book, uh, and so I will absolutely be buying the what if one because every piece of art from the show is gorgeous. Uh, I, on the on the the new thing that I'm working with on the strawberry shortcake team, I think they're mm. tired of me talking about what if already because every week I'm like, did you see what if? <laughs> they did this thing in CG. Does this work? Can we do this? How about this? And they're like, that show costs $3 billion. So <laughs> probably not. And I'm like, but we could like try it, right? We could try it. How close can we get? <laughs> uh, Derek Johnson with the quick super chat says, love this show. The way you guys present information and delve deep into subjects really are great to listen to, especially when you get completely off topic are some of the best moments in the show. Little off topic. I need the Geek Buddies review of Squid Game. Well, I haven't watched it yet. So what? I, I know, I know, I know. But what you do what I do, Mike, I gotta watch 
40 million fucking things. So it's like, I got to figure out the time for something like Squid Game. But yes, I go was, ahead. Well, I would say this. I, I, I will say something without speaking to John and Shannon prior to, but I think this is a good way where we have a little bit of a break coming up. Like yes, what if do. is done? We got a little bit of time before Hawkeye. Yeah. Probably, maybe we don't do like a episode by episode Squid Game, but maybe like once John watches it, yeah. we can do a sort of Geek Buddies like overview of Squid Game because having yeah. just watched it last week uh, and still crying over a certain episode. I won't say because I don't want John to, to expect it coming, but uh, yeah. I think that uh, it's definitely worth us talking okay. about. <laughs> All right. Shannon, you've seen it? I have two episodes left. And okay. I'm pretty sure I know the one Vogel's talking about. All right. All right. I guess I'll jump on it. If we maybe we'll do it uh, coming up on this week's show as our main topic, a bit of a review on, uh, on Squid Game could be fun, depending on how the week turns out with news. All right. Let's move on to our next thing and keep saying in your stream labs and super chats. As I said, I will read them as we go along through the show. Show your support. You love what we do every week. Show your support as we go along here at the Streamlabs address right there on the banner below on the screen as well and in the description of the chat and in the description of this video or in the chat rather and the description of this video. All right, let's show, and hit that like button for God's sakes. We've got 240 y'all joining us right now live. So thank you very, very much. All right, let's move on to our next section here. Ultron shows up to get his stone, as Michael said, back on the planet where he started and brings Black Widow to him, knocking her off in the stone flying uh, uh, Thor uses Mjolnir to cut off Ultron's arm. Uh, got a little Star Wars vibes there in my head and also some uh, Bucky vibes, causing Black Widow and the stone to fall. Strange saves her through one of his portals, and then it's a mad scramble for the stone. This really reminded me of one of those comedic films from the 60s where you see that thing kind of being kicked around and you don't know what the hell is going to happen. Uh, but Ultron is getting frustrated, and just then Strange swallows up Ultron's power of what he's trying to do, which really freaks Ultron out. Uh, they battle Ultron some more to keep him from the stone, including a cool sequence with Black Widow and Captain Carter using the shield and to cut him like essentially in half, which was badass. And, it, and I said here, it mirrors the Thanos attack on Titan with the Avengers. The stone is just sitting there when Gamora slices through Ultron's armor. He uses the time stone to slow things down, grabs the stole, so, soul stone, but Strange uses his own time stone to stop him and then unleashes the tentacles of hell. Awesome imagery here with the slow motion. Uh, Gamora gets the soul stone. Strange traps Ultron in some spell that mirrors a torture device that, lock, that locks him down with the Guardians grabbing a chain each to keep him there. They use the soul stone to power their machine to take the stones off Ultron, leading to a massive explosion. Thor asks if it's over. It isn't. Ultron talks about the stones being unique, and then they realize the stones were designed to destroy the stone. I mean, the machine was designed to destroy the stones on Gamora's world, not Ultron's. He rises up, realizes that Strange is the linchpin, and attacks Strange. Black Widow gets blasted to her cycle. Then her and Captain Carter come up with a one-two plan to use Clint's arrow from Episode Eight on Ultron. The others distract Ultron as Black Widow drives her magic cycle off a building, uh, a ruined building there unleashes the arrow as Captain Carter lands on Ultron, yanks his helmet up, and then the arrow hits Ultron in the eye. Black Widow and uh, Captain Carter apparently land with no broken bones and no problem. Zola, and now Zola is in Ultron, and there is a war of wills inside the body of Ultron that reminds me so much of the lawnmower, man. It blew my mind. Uh, Zola, <laughs> uh, it was so, I mean, those guys, I mean like that is fucking old, uh, lawnmower, man. Zola calls Ultron out for ending Hydra's objective, so he's going to end Ultron as payback. Ultron short circuits and falls to the ground. All right, Mike, we're going to stop here. Uh, what did you think about this whole section and the teamwork that was being laid out here by the Guardians of the Multiverse? Because just because you bring, let me tell you something, just because you bring people together, it doesn't mean they can work together. And we saw here that they were kind of figuring it out as they were going along. And this is really the meat of the battle when they're able to work together in separate units and one whole unit to take down Ultron. What did you think here? Well, to that point, uh, and it, you, this is actually from the previous section, but I didn't mm. touch on it, but this was what I loved about this episode. You had this really great emotional anchor yeah. in Peggy Carter and Natasha and Black Widow. And so, like, when Black Widow does show up and she's like, who the fuck are you guys? Which, if you saw this group show up anywhere, you'd be like, who the fuck are you guys? <laughs> uh, Ca Captain Carter stepping forward and being like, your dad's name is Ivan, your da your da's name is Alexi, like, right. I know who you are. Like, gave her the information that was like, look, we are clearly friends. Like, I'm, I, like, you don't know me, but there is a world in which you and I get along. 
and won Black Widow over in that way. And like that grounding moment, uh, I thought was really nice. That's why we started the way we did in Winter Soldier. That mm -hmm. that, that that friendship uh, through the universe kind of helps the team come together. Even though to John's point, just because you're a bunch of powerful people doesn't mean you're necessarily going to work well together. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we just went. This was where you just went absolutely totally crazy uh when 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 and we've seen ultron we see we saw him do it in episode eight with captain marvel where he just oh you're super powerful i'm gonna blow up the entire planet mm -hmm. and then he just did it again with wanda you're like oh shit super powerful gonna blow up the planet and so he just goes to his same move here he's like i think i'm just gonna blow up the planet <laughs> and then dr strange is like i am going to eat your power and i was like what i literally think i said what the fuck out loud like i was like what is even happening i was like did he eat a, an infinity stone like it took me a minute and be like oh he just ate the power and i think my reaction was the same as ultron's in that moment um but it was absolutely amazing <laughs> Um, and then, yeah, look, uh, Black Widow and Captain Carter doing mm. the double shield fight on Ultron was great. It really reminded me of, uh, of of Bucky and Captain America going on t going on Tony, like two oh, yeah. on one Civil on Tony War. in Civil War, yeah. Yeah. which is great because, you know, in Captain Carter's story, her, her Bucky is actually Steve, so it's her mm. love. Yeah. So the fact that she has her love being the person who was left behind, but she has this best friend in Natasha, and that the two of them are just so in sync in that moment, I thought was really, really fun. And then, yeah, like to, to Johnny's point, like then when the chips are all down, when things don't work, when Gamora's Infinity Stone thing doesn't work, which also, because yeah. they made such a big deal out of we need the Soul Stone, and I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like had we seen that Gamora episode, oh yeah, there probably was a reason that the Soul Stone was the thing that powered her Infinity, her, her, her Infinity Crusher. Right. Um, which we didn't have that information. And again, don't really ding them for it because it is what it is. And then when the Infinity Crusher did come up and do its thing, that was the moment where I was kind of like, okay. But right. I think, again, had I seen the episode, I would've been like, it's the Infinity Crusher. <laughs> um, but like Captain Carter and uh, and Black Widow working together so that uh, Natasha could shoot that arrow. Love the moment where she was like, this one's for you, Clint. Like really nice callback yeah. to episode eight and kind of keeping like the Hawkeye moment alive. And then Zola uh, going, definitely Lawnmower Man, definitely also very much in keeping with like the Age of Ultron moment where Ultron attacked Jarvis. Mm -hmm. uh, did right. it in a very, very similar way. Um, but it was just all great. And, and again, just masterful in the way that they that every piece from every episode n was used. Yeah. Nothing was left unused or unimportant. Everything that happened, we were like, oh yeah, that's why we need this. That's why we need this. That's why this was important. Right. Um, and when you're blocking a massive battle this way and you have so many characters on screen together and you have so much you need to accomplish and you want it to look awesome, the fact that everything felt important is pretty impressive. Yeah, agreed. Shannon, what stood out to you here? Uh, Michael pointing out certain things. Uh, payoffs throughout this episode, as we said at the beginning of this uh, review, uh, happening here as well in this section. So many payoffs that we got uh, the groundwork laid on. And one we didn't because of the Gamora situation and that not getting that episode. But overall, this is the moment where they finally get through to Ultron and defeat him. And much to Ultron's frustration overall, he keeps saying how you all should have died or why won't you all just die? You're so easily killed in the past. But this time, they're not able to get it done. What do you think about the logic around this section of the episode? I mean, Vogel really covered a lot of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. Sorry. Um, it Sorry. I just got so excited. I got so excited. <laughs> you know, I have these notes, John. And, and... <laughs> well, I, I got to, you know, go to each of you separately. So, you know. Oh, no, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm trying and, to balance like, it out. There are these little things that I'll pick up like, ooh, what about this? Ooh, what about that? And then as when Mike goes first, I'm like, Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Who in this one? <laughs> but one of the things that I thought was super awesome about the fight, one, when they get to, you know, they, they go through the portal and they toss that stone, I thought for sure that's when Killmonger was going to betray him. Yeah. And I did not, like, Natasha was such a surprise there. And I was like, oh, awesome. Fantastic. Right. Maybe Killmonger is going to stay good. Fingers crossed. <laughs> wow, you were you were just really holding on to that one, weren't you? I know. I am. I am a. I am a hopeful optimist to my detriment, apparently. Yeah. Um, but the moment that uh, Strange sort of tentacles out, and this is like one of those small character moments. They cut over to Peggy's face, 
Yes. And she remembers that's the thing that I pushed into the portal right. back during World War II. I mean, those little moments of acknowledgement and recognition, they're things that you don't need for the story. I mean, right. like it's the, the train has left the station. It's going forward. But it's just one of those fun little moments of like, oh, my God, that's right. She remembers. Right. Like, that's, that's so just freaking cool. And the moment that Zola takes over, I mean, oh. yes, the, the reversal of Age of Ultron was great. And again, Toby Jones for the limited amount of screen time that he has just makes the most of it and is coming up into one of the moments that I think Thor has one of the best jokes of the episode. But yes, all over Peggy ripping the helmet back, getting to see getting to see the flash drive arrow going to the eye. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, Ooh. awesome, awesome. Yeah. yeah. I also yeah, for the first time in my life, this the sentence I never thought I would say, thank God for Zola. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a that's a that's a that's a good good trick yeah. um i will say she, i saw somebody ask this in a chat like i think I, I mentioned blocking and shannon knows action blocking better than i do uh because he is real real good at it but uh but yeah like what this whole episode is is when you're writing when you're writing a script and you're like faced with a giant action sequence particularly with a bunch of people like you block out the action it just basically yeah. means like you're like okay well so then this character goes here so that this happened like like it is basically uh you're mapping everything out and then you have to put it on the page mm -hmm. and i start sweating i get very very stressed out in writing action uh which is why i usually just kick it over to mr mcclung and say hey why don't you why don't you do something really really cool i'll do the character and emotional stuff but like have some fun things happen because it's hard with just like one character battling a bunch of people and when you have all of these characters you as an audience member don't always notice it when it's good yeah. but when it's bad you notice it because you're like wait a minute why isn't Killmonger doing anything in this battle. Like, you know, you have to make sure that everyone is engaged and everyone's doing something. Uh, and I think they did a really, really great job of it here. Good point. Uh, Derek Johnson says, you guys are awesome. Thanks, Derek. Appreciate that. Thanks, uh, Derek. Question from Mike Vogel real quick. This is not a stream time, but I'll let this one through. Uh, who would win in a fight, Ultron Vision or a full-powered Midnight Sparkle? And how much damage would it cause to the multiverse? That's a good question. I think it's a valid question. <laughs> Hold on. Ooh, hold on. I'm thinking here. <laughs> this, this is a tough one. I mean, I think I'm going to go Midnight Sparkle on this one. I think wow. that, but here is why. Okay. Uh, I, I think that, I think that equestrian magic is weird and doesn't make a whole lot of sense sometimes. And right. Ultron is a logical dude. And I think if Ultron is going through universes and ripping things apart and shows up in Equestria where the most powerful magic in the world is friendship and Midnight Sparkle as a twisted version uh, is using her dark magic to do it, I think Ultra, I think he's like, the fuck is even going on? Why does everybody have rainbows on their butt? I don't know. And I think he's thrown <laughs> off his game and I think he loses. Right. That's my answer. <laughs> I, I, I also think uh, Vogel wrote one episode of an animated series for Marvel, and he wrote a whole bunch <laughs> for My Little Pony. So I think it might oh, be a little wow. bit of well, favoritism. loyalty. <laughs> listen, listen. I wrote, I wrote an epic battle of hundreds. Of, oh, I, I wrote a Lord of the Rings level battle. In my little in the My Little Pony series finale, and I got yelled at by the directors because I put too many characters on screen at the same time. But I think it turned out great, so I'm going with the ponies. I like this idea. There you go. Always go to ponies. Stormy Stormy Woods, very kind. It says thank you, Geek Buddies, for being a bright spot in a tough two weeks for me. Hey, I. Aww. I think I speak for all three of us that it's our pleasure. I'm glad we can put a smile on your face and pick up your spirits. And uh, Joseph Ashton says, I need the art book for this show. Absolutely, as we mentioned. I hope it'll be coming out soon. All right, let's see. We got one more stream. He said, uh, this is from uh, Right Now and Later. It says, I love Geek Buddies. The reviews and commentaries are spot on and very entertaining. I'm curious to know, after watching all nine episodes of What If, how would you rank the episodes from most favorite to least favorite? All right, Right Now and Later, we'll cover that a little bit later on in the show, but we'll definitely swing back to answer that uh, stream lab for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna make some notes while we talk, so I'm ready yeah. for this one. <laughs> no, worries. no worries, no worries. And yeah, the stream lab super chats are open, ladies and gentlemen. Send in your support as we go along. We're going into the last section of this episode uh, as we're breaking it all down here. And yes, we are live. Some people are asking in the chat if we're live. Yes, we're live. So send in your questions, send in your stream labs and super chats if you want your questions answered here on the show. All right, let's jump into this next section. Here is the last 
section as Ultron is laying there. Suddenly his armor and his stones are being taken by Killmonger of all people, which you saw coming. A la kind of like the kind of like what we saw in Infinity War and Endgame with this kind of dust and it's coming on to him, turns around and Killmonger in his full glory there is ready to, uh, to take the stones and use the power. The Guardians get ready to battle him. Him, Killmonger argues that they can change their realities and make them better if they use the stones. Goes to each person and points out, the I don't know how he knows this, but goes to each person and points out exactly how they could fix their worlds or fix their lives in a positive way. Um, and there's this pause and you think just maybe it's going to happen. And T'Challa says, cousin, give me the stones. And that's when he's like, man, we ain't cousins. And that's, he, he fights it and, and Killmonger refuses and attacks them. But just then Zola gets up as Ultron and he has this kind of stomach, uh, <laughs> stomach screen there and Killmonger and him and Killmonger battle over who gets the stones using their power and the, they're so equal in power at this point that the stones stay right in the middle strange realizes that they were there not to separate the stones they weren't there to win they were there to separate the stones from ultron's body and he locks zolatron and killmonger in a pocket dimension to battle over control of the stones forever natasha gives a silent tribute to clint by looking at the bow then Watcher and Strange talk, and Strange agrees to watch over the pocket dimension he created because that's what friends are for. And then Watcher sends them all back to their universes through the door. But Peggy uh, stops for just a second, sees the picture of Steve there hanging in the bar, and kind of wants to head back to her life, to, a, to a, an, the old life, uh, saying that she's maybe earned her happy ending and kind of mirroring what happens at the end of Endgame there. The Watcher says, trust me, that world, that time needs captain carter we're gonna find out why uh black widow and watcher are left and she confronts him uh and argues with him you just sat there and watched all this happen that's what you guys do and that's maybe a preview for some of the argument we may hear in the eternals i like that kind of laying the groundwork a little bit she asks him to fix her world he says he can't but he can put her back into another world and that's nick fury's world which we saw from episode three uh uh to replace the black widow that pym killed uh, Loki is there and has uh, Fury at his mercy and gets absolutely kick smashed by Black Widow, who picks up the scepter, touches him with the scepter, and then his eyes go black and she controls him. Fury recognizes that this isn't his Natasha, Natasha rather, but she has her spirit. Watcher talks to us about a place to belong, to call home, and he says he will protect all the stories here because the stories are his home. He will protect them to the end. And then we go to a post credit scene. Captain Carter gets punched by Batrock. Widow electrocutes him. Widow and Carter walk into the bowels of the ship to find the Hydra Stomper. And Black Widow says, yeah, and there's someone inside. Oh, snap dizzle. So the as much you may love the Vision and uh, a Wanda romance, there is always the Peggy and Steve romance. So great to see it being touched on there in that post credit scene. Uh, Michael, I, oh, Shannon, rather, I go to you first on this one. Uh, what did you think about this way of ending the show, ending the episode, ending the series, or ending, ending the season, rather, with this last section here, Killmonger possibly embracing the stones? Was this the plan all along from the Watcher that Killmonger would be the person who could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Zolatron or Ultron or whatever with the stones, and that would keep them constantly in the same state uh, forever and then that post credit scene talk to me yeah i mean that's i mean that's what dr strange says like our our objective we were never going to beat him like we just we yeah. just needed to separate him and so the idea that you have them in this eternal conflict inside a little mirror dimension that dark door strange has to watch over for all of eternity yeah that's right it's staying <laughs> it's sticking hashtag oh. dark door strange it doesn't roll off the tongue but it looks oh great in print God. uh <laughs> Stick to the action already. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, the the coolest thing about the Killmonger character in What If is we got to see more of the um, kind of the the persuasive side of mm. him. Like by the time mm -hmm. we see him in Black Panther, I mean it's it's fight it's fighting time. Like it's like yeah. it's time it's time for battle. Whereas this, he gets to he he, he gets to kind of you know be that temptation yeah. and just the justifications that he gives everyone makes total sense and he's saying to peggy like hey don't you want to be with your man don't yeah doesn't that make you know wouldn't that make you happy like it's so tempting and so real and obviously i don't think any of the heroes 
would have taken him up on that offer, but the fact that it was his cousin that was the one who stopped him or right. or, or made that attempt to stop him. He stepped uh, into thought, the void of silence. Yep. Yeah, it was. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, because yeah. they're because they're all thinking about it. Yes, they're all thinking exactly, about it. Exactly, exactly. But to talk, but T'Challa is the one who's you know, give me the stones, cousin. Mm. Um, love the classic Zola look that we get <laughs> with the face in the stomach, which gave us the Thor line that explains the stomach face, <laughs> 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 which made me laugh so so much. You know, Zola went full Krang at that point, and <laughs> then as you know, we're kind of saying goodbye to all the heroes knowing that uh which stories are we gonna see yeah going into season yeah. two like it's a really like we, we assume we're gonna see more of captain carter natasha and whoever is in that hydra stomper yeah. um yeah and to to think that like phase four characters are probably going to be joining them that you're going to have shang chi that you're going to have some of the eternals like i think that's it's really really exciting i mean with Batrock having the Hydra Stomper on that ship. I mean, by the end of episode one, Steve didn't go into the portal. Steve was outside. Steve was yeah. there. So yeah. what's the story behind them getting a hold of the Hydra Stomper? And why on earth would Steve still be in there? It's so, mm. so curious. Um, yeah, I mean, I would put I would put what if up with WandaVision right now in terms of in terms of quality. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, Michael, what did you think of this ending here as a way to kind of uh, put everything together, put him in the micro dimension that he's created there, but also sending everybody back, put black widow back into another world, essentially maybe kind of violating the rules of the watcher and the way he's done things. He's actually affecting a world by putting a, a black widow there. And also this uh, post credit scene here uh, with, uh, with the, uh, st the Hydra stopper. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, first off, I think that uh, um, Killmonger, Killmonger's fascinating to me, kind of to Shannon's point. Mm. I think the other thing, in addition to his persuasiveness, is in the in What If, we really got to see how smart Killmonger is. And mm -hmm. I think I really like that. Like, they say graduated at MIT and everything in the movie, but to Shannon's right. point, uh, Killmonger in Black Panther is just a, kind of like just this this brute force that comes in and kind of like takes over and uh does what he does and in what if both in his episode in working with tony yeah. and here i mean the fact that he picks up that ultron head and is just super hyper focused on it and then in this moment has clearly figured out how it works so that he uses the ultron technology to like pull those stones right off of the body mm -hmm. is really really cool um, and then he does he does what everybody you know like the infinity stones are tempting like that's yeah. what's cool about the infinity stones is yeah if you're a thanos or you're an ultron you can use it for bad purposes but even a good person would be tempted because any of us on our best days are like well i could fix the world i i could make things right, better right. um and i think killmonger playing on that with every single person is great and like every but we all said i just love that it's t'challa that's like no that's not yeah. what we do here uh <laughs> so loved all of that uh loved that loved the idea that the watcher really did pick everybody because like there was a point in the middle of the battle that i was like okay, you literally watched Killmonger betray everybody. Why would you put him on this team? And then I was like, oh, you put him on this team because you wanted him to betray everybody. Okay, you know what? Cool. You picked a good team. Good team. Good choice. Good choice. <laughs> I, I, I approve. I approve. Uh, and then, I, yeah, when everybody was leaving at the end, I really loved it. I had this really weird meta moment that I want to talk about because it okay. was really interesting. When Black Widow was pissed at the Watcher and really letting him have it, and justifiably so, like, I mean... If you're following the rules, she's going back to a planet where she is alone. Yes. Uh, and she really just like, she's like, oh, did you have popcorn? Was it fun to watch all of us? Mm -hmm. Like, is that what you do? And he has this moment where he gets really passionate and he gets really sad. And he's like, your, your stories are everything to me. They're so important. And I was like, oh, we're the watcher. Mm. I was like, like there was this real, like, I was like, all of us, every single one of us who reads these comic books and obsesses over the Marvel movies and That's watches this, point. like, we're basically just peeking into another dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, Grant Morrison, in his biography, writes very uh, passionately about this and his belief that the comic books are, like, a dimension that we just peek in on. And, like, when The Watcher was giving this speech, I was like, oh we are the watcher like we've just been peeking into each of these dimensions and we've been observing and we can't interact and we can't interfere we're just observing and i was yeah. like this is 
this is like some Burning Man shit. I gotta go. I gotta go <laughs> sip some mushroom tea and, and think about what this means because this you know, really you know, just blew my mind. Th- you know, there was there was philosophy before, before Burning, Burning Man. Man. You know, I just want to make sure that's clear. Um, <laughs> there might have been philosophy before Burning Man, but it's more fun to discuss philosophy when you're in the desert and everybody's dressed like a Care Bear. So that's, that's I prefer fair. that. Um, but yeah, so I, I did, and I did love oh. like that he did say like, look, because she basically says, "Can you fix my world?" And yeah. he can't do that. Like that's too much for the Watcher to do. He can't like change the fate of a universe. But he does the next best best thing, which is just like kind of pop her over to another universe. And you know, the Avengers theme swell and we're on the helicarrier and she has a great mm. moment where she knocks Loki the fuck out and it's super satisfying and then over the Watcher's final bits where we get those little moments of like Peter and Star-Lord fighting together Tony and Gamora doing whatever the fuck Tony and Gamora are doing Thor and Jane finally get their date you know Strange <clears throat> is guarding the snow globe of doom and you know we see where everybody is and then yeah that post credit sequence it's great like it's such an interesting I think that the MCU phases one through three yeah. made so much out of the ultimate bromance. Like Steve mm. and Bucky are like just the ultimate bromance. Like Steve would do anything for his best friend and you just love the fact that they are so close. And the fact that with Peggy and Steve, we get to take the ultimate Marvel romance and kind of replace the bromance with that. Like yeah. it's just, it kind of makes it so like you just can't wait to see where it goes next. Yeah. Go ahead, Shannon, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say, we all love that bromance except for John <laughs> because Steve took off and left. <laughs> Which one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's bring everybody back. Peace out. I'm going to hang out with Patty. You guys deal with it. I, I can't do it. I'm going to go be an old man with Peggy. No, but I will say this. You know, we've been doing the Stereos rewatch, the uh, MCU rewatch show on, on Stereo with, uh, with Lady Outlaw and I. She does not like Bucky. Not a fan of Bucky at all. And so I'm wondering if Falcon and Winter Soldier will, will turn her uh, into possibly accepting this bromance. Because I, this is one of the most shocking things I discovered on the show is that she does not like uh, Bucky. Um, you know, I thought it was knocked on my ass when she said Winter Soldier wasn't her. Like, she thought it was the worst of the MCU movies. I, I lost my mind when she said that. But then when she said Bucky's just not a character I care about. He's too messy for me. I thought that was hilarious. So we'll see. If Falcon, so a lot of us <laughs> I mean, embrace the bromance, but clearly not everybody. Yeah. I don't I don't want to speak out of turn here, but <laughs> the lady outlaw saying she doesn't like somebody because they're too messy for her, given where she lives. is How uh, dare you? How fucking dare you? Just, How fucking dare just, you, sir? Just sir. <laughs> One person's mess, <laughs> another person's, uh, you know, clean house. What are you talking we about? Were, Come on. We were so close to being done without having I, any shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> it's the snow globe of doom, son. The snow globe. I mean, of listen, doom. it was like Dr. Doc, Strange was like, all right, I'm going to go chill in my little pocket universe from the world that I destroyed and stay by myself and watch these two people just in an in, in an infinite loop of trying to steal the, the stones from each other. I'm like, whew. Yeah, it just stays right there. The stone's right in the middle between both of them. It's a perfect situation for sure. Um, all right. I I like the way it ended. I enjoyed the fact that they let Killmonger do what he did. And where he ended up in the pocket dimension was great. I will say this. I thought that end credits or the post-credit sequence was going to be uh, uh, him as the Winter Soldier. Steve as the Winter Soldier. Uh, but it, he, he might be in the Hydra Stomper, but I don't know. It might be. You don't know. Right, Maybe what's happened is. to Steve the whole time. Right. Yeah, exactly. He might have been experimented on the whole time while he's been in the hydra stomper so we shall see for sure because it didn't feel like a positive ending necessarily so oh i'm sure that'll be part of what we get into the uh thing it's you know who it's not a positive ending for thank you you it's not a positive ending for (sighs) thank you bernard and bernard and accounting (laughs) hey that's true poor bernard (laughs) bernard and accounting whatever shot he had it just went right out the window he's done he's done (laughs) He's like doing this. the calculations. It doesn't look good right now. <laughs> uh, let's see. What is this one? Caleb Brooks says, what if Roka had to escape Hayward Island? Yeah, that's true. What if? That's a good one. <laughs> he would, he would, listen, we all know Roka would go down with that island. I would be there. I would be there with a boat. I would be like, Roka, just get on the boat. Just get yeah. on the boat. You just have to say that Hayward was horrible. He'd be like, nope. I'm. I, I, we're rewatching it, and I'm even more on Hayward Island. I, like, I built a condo on Hayward Island, even more so. But I blame the writers for not fleshing that character out more than I blame the character. Um, I, I like this question. Did anyone else find Strange's delivery of the what are friends for a bit ominous? 
Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. A little bit. Right. What are friends for? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I will say, leaving somebody who more or less destroyed their universe for a selfish reason. Yeah. Um, with two other people who also <laughs> have selfish reasons and the Infinity Stones could be dangerous. Maybe I could see how this could go wrong. That's true. That's true. I think inherently any any line of dialogue that Dark Door Strange delivers is going to sound <laughs> ominous. God damn it. It's not going to end, is it? It's not going to end. Jesus Christ. Uh, I, I can't wait. I can't wait Kimberly till season says, two and we get, I can't wait till season two we get, what if Shannon didn't make dad jokes? <laughs> <laughs> That's the episode I want to see. Kimberly, if Dark Door Strange is hot, I want you to see somebody because that, that means you'd like these uh, crazy bad boys and you might be in some trouble for God's sakes. No, Dark Door, Dark Door Strange is a bit Kimberly, unstable and unsettling. Kimberly, I wouldn't kick him out of bed. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see if we've got any. Uh, let's sit, let's swing back to these stream labs here. Uh, G Smith wanted to know when the Watcher at changes his mission and says he will quote defend it to the end. Is he talking about other Watchers, Kang, the Celestials, etc.? And what do you think about this? When he like that, he will defend like the universes against those people. Is well, that that's what, what he, he says at the end. He will defend these uh, tales or these uh, uh, these characters to the end. These stories to the end. He uh, G Smith is wondering: Is he talking about defending them against other Watchers or against Kang or the Celestials? Maybe. I mean, and this is kind of similar to the comics. And mm. Green Lantern does the same thing, or DC does the same thing with some of the. Um, the fuck are the people that run the Green Lanterns? The big-headed blue guys? What are they called? Why do they just like draw? Blank oh, on uh, the, the ones on the Guardians from the Guardians. Oa. The yeah. Guardians of Oa. You know, like there's there's like the Guardians of Oa do this too, where they have like their very specific rules, but there's always that yeah. one rogue one. Um, I think with Uatu, like it'll be interesting to see where they go because, like I was saying earlier, like at a certain point we thought season two was going to be maybe the continuation of some of these stories. Mm. But with the finale, we saw that they pretty much wrapped that up. Like, we're not going to get more Killmonger. We see that Star-Lord and Peter are fighting together, and we assume they beat Ego. So I don't think we're going to see more of what we saw. I think mm -hmm. we'll see new stuff. But I do think it would be really interesting to see Uatu uh, in season two after he interfered, mm. uh, and where that leaves him, if there yep. are repercussions for that. Um, and if he does decide to kind of do his own thing and kind of maybe become more involved. So I think there's definitely the possibility that we could see some of that in season two for sure. All right, we're going to wrap things up here in the next few minutes. So if you want to get in a question now, send in your stream lab or super chat now for us to answer. And we're going to answer some of these that have come through already. So do it now. You see the address on the screen. You see the address uh, above our heads. You also see it in the description of this uh, video and in the chat, pinned in the chat. So send in your questions now. We're going to wrap this up and thing up here in the next 10, 15 minutes. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, Jesse Banana says, thanks. You guys are the best. Kapow. Oh. I like, a, I like a good Kapow. I'll take it. <laughs> no, I thought it was going to be Kachow, but no, it was Kapow. All right. Keith Archer says, love the show. Thanks for all the great content. Thank you, Keith. We appreciate it. And Fretastic says, anybody else think Steve and the Hydra Stomper will be nothing but bones? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, great show, guys. Waiting for the Squid Game review like others. Thanks for all the insight. Yeah, what do you guys think? Do you think... There'll be just bones inside the Hydra Stopper. I, it seems odd. What, what do you I know? Will, the fastest, <laughs> fastest. You know, like you know, do, I don't know if anybody does what I do, but each week, like before I even watch the episode, I like look to see how many minutes it is. Yes. So I'm like, oh, 35 minutes, awesome. Oh, 32 minutes, okay, like whatever. That will be the what if? What if Steve in the Hydra Stopper was just bones? Is a three minute episode. <laughs> three minutes. You open up the Hydra Stopper and you go, oh, oh. oh all right, Ooh. well. That sucks. But Bernard's chances are improving. <laughs> Bernard, Bernard. Final shot, Bernard gets a text. <laughs> from, from, from Natasha. Yeah, it might still be in the game, kid. Uh, <laughs> Steve is bones. Doctor Strange strikes again. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Uh, even Jellian says, uh, do you think Zola and Killmonger being victims of their own desires for power is a fitting punishment for them? Kind of, yeah. Well, Zola, not really, but more Ultron, right? I mean, well, is Zola, Zola is too. It, is it? Okay, all right. I yeah. mean, Zola, Zola, 
uh, AKA Kuatu from Total Recall. Right. Uh, you know, he showed up and then he wanted the stones. Like, all three of them, I think it's always more satisfying when a villain is the victim of their own desires. I think mm-hmm. that, uh, I mean, this is the uh, My Little Pony strawberry shortcake side of me, but right, right. I always like it when uh, the hero is always there to be open to a villain kind of changing their stripes. Yeah. But when a villain doesn't change their stripes, it's always their own hubris, their own selfishness, it's their downfall. I love that. That always yeah. satisfies me. Nothing wrong with hubris, but uh, yeah, it can lead to your downfall. That's for sure. Uh, Francisco Lopez says, hey, guys, I really love and enjoy every What If episode. Very main characters from each episode are badass in their own right. And I really love how badass and menacing Ultron can really be with the Vision body. Yeah, let's touch that real quick. Uh, um, do we Did they, in essence redeem the Ultron from Age of Ultron and open the door to the possibility of Ultron coming back from another universe and being a part of the MCU proper? Or was this a way to kind of satisfy those people who've been waiting to see Ultron being used correctly from the comics or as they've seen him in the comics? Is this a, Was this a way to say, okay, here, you guys enjoy this, but he's not coming back live action. What do you guys think? Shannon? Do you mean redemption as a storyline? or Yeah, as a storyline. Or, or, okay. or, okay. or, okay. or as a character. <laughs> or as a, as, a, as a character insofar no, no. as like Ultron. People feel like, oh, Ultron wasn't used the best right. or whatever. You right. Know? right. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't think we're going to see Ultron in live action again. I think he, he is gone. Really? Okay. No, no, I think he's I think he's gone the way of the dodo. But I do mm-hmm. think um, they got to do a, a lot of things with what if about mm-hmm. like, you know, we didn't we didn't get to we didn't get to see how smart killmonger really was like we didn't get to see this we didn't get to see that and i think for what they did do with ultron um and we did get to see sort of the efficiency of his Mm -hmm. villainy i i would i would assume it was very very satisfying for all all involved yeah what do you think mike i mean i think they definitely showed off exactly what shannon said like every Mm. character got got to show off what they could really do that showed up in what if i think look Age of Ultron, I've watched it a few times during the pandemic. I kind of watched a lot of Marvel movies during the pandemic several times. Um, (laughs) And I kind of revisited the ones that I usually don't watch as much, and Age of Ultron was definitely one of those. Age of Ultron is a little bit of a mess sometimes. Yes. It is definitely at least 30 minutes too long. But I don't think that Ultron is one of the problems with Age of Ultron. Like Mm. I think James Spader's performance is so great. I love the fact that he is just a sociopathic robot. Uh, And I actually think that of all the issues that I have with Age of Ultron, which I have quite a few, Mm. uh, Ultron himself isn't one of them. I do think that Ultron could have played the game a little bit smarter. And I think the Ultron in What If absolutely plays the game a little bit smarter. So in Mm. that respect, I think he is redeemed. But I always, whenever anyone's like, oh, did you redeem Ultron? I always feel like I need to like defend that part of the movie a little bit because I think Mm. as a villain, he was actually super cool. That's fair. I think that's a fair delineation between the two or, or in essence, like separation between the movie itself and yeah. the character. That's a good uh, point you make there, Michael. Um, uh, and we're going to get to our rankings here in just a second. Vegetable Tube donated. Jesus, thank you very much, De- Vegetable Tube says, John, I will take Dark Door Strange for 100. Oh, boy. Okay. The all fact right. that you guys all encourage Shannon, he <laughs> leaves these, he leaves these live shows and he feels good about his choices. And it just means you don't have to hear it. You only hear it once a week. We get text messages. <laughs> we get it in person. It's true. And you guys encourage him. It's true. Oh, <laughs> so true. Uh, all right. And then uh, a couple more here. Francisco Lopez says, also, I don't know about you guys, but I felt like uh, every episode felt like a two hour movie, but not in a bad way. Oh, oh I could yeah. feel that. Yeah. That's yeah. Good point. yeah. Yeah, I think I there mean, was that's... there were a lot of complete story. There were a lot of complete stories told, and you know, yep. perfect world. We'd be we'd get to see everything that all of the gaps in, in the story. Mm. Like we get to see everything filled in. That would be great. I mean, so like you know, the idea that they were going to do a T'Challa spinoff, a yeah. Star Lord T'Challa spinoff. I mean, they they recognize how how well these stories are, are being told, and how much yeah. the audience really enjoys this concept. I mean, yeah. the thought of that we're gonna we're probably gonna see more Captain Carter and Natasha together, I think is great. I mean, is there is there a a reality where we get to see Scarlett Johansson and Haley Atwell together in live action for a movie? Probably not. Yeah, probably um, not. Um 
maybe we get to maybe we get to see a Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We get to see a little glimpse. Yes. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I I, I had the same feeling. Okay. Yeah, it's what I was saying about the efficiency of storytelling. Like, I think they did such a good job in each one of these episodes in within, you know, call it 32 to 36 minutes or however Mm. long the longest and shortest ones were, where they did such a great job of just hitting those story beats in such a succinct way that you felt like you were getting a fuller story, a longer story. And like, look, and if they had had the opportunity, I mean, you know, the best episodes, like the T'Challa episode, uh, like the zombie episode, like you could have easily seen them flesh that out and filled two hours with it. But I think what we got was great in each one of those instances. Yeah, agreed. And and that's what, that marks great storytelling. That marks your ability. People yeah. say to me all the time, oh, you know, like Michael, you know, and a little bit Michael said about the Olaf thing. Oh, it was where it was placed. If people, if there was a goddamn good 20 minutes, it wouldn't have matter where it was placed. People would have been distracted. That's the way I look at things. People make excuses for everything, but no, if it's good enough, it'll rise above whatever situation sir, you put around it, sir. We are in a frozen fight. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You can this... have your, you have your, you have your Hayward Island. <laughs> I will hang out here in Arendelle and just sip my hot chocolate and just That's glare fine. at you. That's fine. You know why? You know the best place to visit, you know, the best time to visit Hayward Island in summer. Uh, here's yeah. one for you, Max. Uh, Spider-Man three, turn off the dark door. Strange. Oh, fucking hell! You guys, we're in, we're in so much trouble. These are making my life real, real difficult. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see one more. We, let's see, what we got here. Um, uh, Francisco Lopez says, oh, "Oh, yeah, okay." He already said that. Sorry, Samuel Monsalve says, "Thank you guys so much for the content. Is there any chance for Killmonger to be good, or is he always going to be a villain now?" Yeah, you know, the thing that struck me about Killmonger is they played, it, played him out in this particular uh, uh, property or in this particular uh, what-if show is that he's intelligent, but he's one of these geniuses that, like, sees everybody else as below him because they're so easily manipulatable to him. So to me, I, that's what I like about him is this is a, a more fleshed-out Killmonger. Even though we got a good fleshed-out Killmonger in Black Panther, I like this version even more. We get to see his intelligence. We get to see his ability to do these thing, kind of things. So to me, that opens the door to a possible redemption down the road in whatever version Killmonger comes in. What did you guys think? I think it was how he had to grow up. You know, I mean, yeah, he, he, ha- he had that intelligence. He lost his mom. He lost yeah. his dad. You know, he 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 is a result of his, of his of the way he was brought up, of his mm-hmm. upbringing. And it was a he, he was a survivor. Yeah. And that is, you know, he didn't have that role model to show him like, yes, you have gifts and there's a responsibility that comes with those gifts. Hmm. Okay. What did you I think, think about I, I think that this question in and of itself is what's awesome about a series like What If and what mm. Marvel has done. Because uh, in any other universe or cinematic universe or otherwise that we talk about, you talk about the given circumstances. You're like, well, this is what happened. So this is what you get. Yeah. And with What If, we all of a sudden are like, well, what if T'Chaka didn't kill his brother? Mm. What if right. T'Chaka's brother never left Wakanda? What if Killmonger and T'Challa grew up as best friends? You know, like you all of a sudden you get to start to play these things where you're like, you can have these really big level discussions about nature versus nurture or this or that. Like, was Killmonger always destined? Like, you know, like if there was a world where uh, T'Chaka and his brother were Mm -hmm. best friends, his brother never left, and T'Challa and Killmonger grew up uh, next to each other side by side. Would Killmonger have still been jealous of T'Challa? Would ah. with something so you know, like like those are the interesting stories that Good a points. show like What If sort of gets your brain working on, which I just think is awesome. Yeah, it's a great point. Absolutely, I agree with both of you. Um, all right, let's answer this question, then we'll wrap up the show here. So if you if you got one last Streamlab, send in, send it now, uh, right now and later. Asked us to uh, rank the episodes from most favorite to least favorite. Really, I like them all. So I don't know about you two, but. I like them all, so I, I even, I, I don't know, I hesitate to even call them least favorite, but still, I, I think they're all good, but here's the ranking of them. Do you guys have a ranking? Who wants to go first? Well, Shannon had his ready to go, so I think okay. Shannon should Shannon, go first while I, go while, I, while I fill in my gaps here. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to go lowest to highest, because okay. I feel like a, a countdown sense. should you know count up. Uh, let's see, episode nine. Uh, or excuse me, number nine would be episode three. The world. What if the world lost its mightiest heroes? Okay. Uh, number eight 
would be what if zombies. Okay. Number seven, what if Killmonger rescued Tony Stark? Number six, what if Captain Carter were the first Avenger? Number five, what if Thor were an only child? Mm. Number four, what if the Watcher broke his oath? Number three, what if Ultron won? Number two, what if Doctor Strange lost his heart instead of his hands? And number one, what if T'Challa became a Star-Lord? Wow, wow. All right. Uh, Mikey, do you have yours ready to go? All right. Number nine, what if the Avengers were dead? <laughs> number, is that what it's called? What if the Avengers died? What was it called? What if, what if, the, what Hank if the world Pym? lost its mightiest heroes? Yeah, the what Hank if, Pym one. Just say Hank Pym. Yeah, yeah, Hank Pym. No, yeah, number nine, what if Hank Pym fucked up again? <laughs> uh, number eight, kill, the Killmonger episode. Mm. Uh, Eight, number se- well, again, kind of, kind of your point. I like them all. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like Definitely. it's a very like like none of these are I disliked. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, nine nine dead Avengers. Hank Pym. Eight Killmonger. Seven is actually uh Party Thor. Wow. Oh, six is the six is the finale. Mm-hmm. Five is zombies. Okay. Four is uh, um, if Ultron won. Okay. Three is Doctor Strange. Two is Captain Carter. Okay. And one is T'Challa is Star Wars. Those are good lists. You're both wrong. I'll read mine. That's the correct one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number nine is the zombies episode uh, for me. Number eight is the Hank Pym episode. Uh, number seven is the Killmonger episode. Uh, number six is the Thor in Vegas episode. Number five, uh, and this was hard. I couldn't believe it went all the way down to number five because I love this episode so much. But the Captain Carter episode is number five. I actually rewatched it again. It's a cute episode, but it doesn't hold up the way the other ones do to multiple rewatches. Uh, so that's why I put it there. Five, four is the Ultron episode uh, that we got with episode eight. Uh, three is the finale, the season finale we just covered here on, the, on this show. Two is the T'Challa episode, and number one is the Dark Thor Strange episode. I do. Why love are you that saying one. it? Why are you saying <laughs> sorry, it? You're right. You're right. Because oh. it's great, Michael. Because it's great. <laughs> I'm trying to humor my my other fellow good buddy. But yeah, um, <laughs> that's that's my opinion overall. I mean, I, I think like like I said at the beginning, like we, I think all three of us agree. This was a fun, fun season. This was some great, great uh, storylines and some great characters and some fantastic voiceover work by all the character by all the actors returning to voice the characters and all the new actors that came in and got a chance to uh, play these characters and voice over these characters. And shout out to all of them and a shout out to all the animators, the writers, the creators, yeah. everybody involved in this because this was a satisfying uh, season of uh, Marvel TV. And I would put it. I, I think it's Loki, what if, WandaVision, and Falcon and Winter Soldier for me. I don't know about you guys, but what did you think overall about this as we wrap up about this season of What If? Uh, I would go WandaVision, What If, Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Okay. I think I'm the same. I think I'm WandaVision, What If, Loki, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's yeah? right. Uh, okay. And look, I think What If was great. I think that... Um, I think as we've said this a lot, like I think with all of the announcements when they first announced what the shows were, obviously all the live action shows got us super excited. Yeah. And at the time it was like, oh, they're going to do a what if series. That'll be cute. Um, and I think that they really delivered so well on mm-hmm. this what if series that it really just rose up in the ranks. And look, I think that our love of this show will only increase if we see a uh, live action Captain Carter or some other characters show up in Doctor Strange 2 mm-hmm. or some other places. So I think that yeah. uh, the fact that what if, much like what Star Wars has done with their animated series, the fact that the animated series are uh, on the level with anything they do in live action and are as canon and as important, I think is really, really great. Yeah, agreed, 100%. Um, all right, well, there we go. Let's wrap it up there. Thank you to everybody who sent in. Oh, we've got one more here from Lou Hip Fan. It says, just to close the conversation for season one, Killmonger serves to show that if you are introduced to as a, quote, villain, you will stay a villain. Shannon brought it up. Th- Shannon brought up Thanos as a counter before, but I feel that his becoming good in the what if is temporary. That could be interesting for season two that where Thanos goes back the other way because he can't deny his natural impulses towards villainy. That's a possibility. 
yeah yeah it's good stuff uh and loop also follows up and says dark door strange is gonna happen so there you go you uh, guys. <laughs> you somebody, guys. somebody make a t-shirt for it we'll sell it on the show uh um, all right thank you all so much for joining us uh we appreciate it man thanks for all the stream labs and super chats and most of all thanks for being friends of the geek buddies and for watching and listening and sharing all the stuff that we do here everywhere you know we're built we're the little engine that could and we're building every week strong more and more people coming in more and more take people taking chances on us and we appreciate it madly uh and uh, shannon what do we have to tell them uh, for them to do their part yeah, if you'd like to follow us on social media, on Twitter, it's at Geek underscore Buddies. On Instagram, at The underscore Geek underscore Buddies. If you'd like to follow me on social media, on Twitter, it's at Shannon underscore McClung. On Instagram, it's Shannon the Geek Buddy. If you would like to follow Mr. Vogel and tweet at Dark Tour Strange for him <laughs> at all times, you can follow him at MK Tune. <laughs> and if you would like to follow Mr. Roca and become complicit with Dark Tour Strange, oh, you can follow yeah. him at The Roca Says. <laughs> Wow. Uh, Mikey? <laughs> if you are... <laughs> if you are a weird Hayward Island uh, hey. denizen like Mr. Roca, or you hate, or you like stupid puns like Mr. <laughs> McClung, or if you're cool like me, we're glad that you're here with us. Uh, and here's some things that you can do to allow us to keep doing all of the stupid stuff that we do each week. Uh, Definitely hit the like button below. As many of you guys are in live in this chat right now, that's how many likes we should have. Go do it right now while I'm saying it. It's going to take yes. two seconds to do. Subscribe to Johnny's Outlaw Nation page and get all the amazing content. Leave comments below. Your comments during this live session have been amazing. Uh, definitely yeah. leave, leave more comments. Let us know what you think, what you're excited to see, what you think of Shannon's horrible puns. Like, Let us know all of it. Is there <laughs> anyone out there that is with me? Is anybody anti-dark tour strange please <laughs> speak up now put it in the comments uh definitely uh if you're listening to us on spotify or apple Podcasts or anywhere leave us some stars leave us some comments it helps us go up in those rankings so more people can find us when they search for fun entertainment podcasts and as always uh retweet this video post it on your socials tell everybody to check out the geek buddies because we sure do love being ridiculous absolutely and don't forget the podcast it's really important i know mike just said it but i want to reiterate even more go and subscribe to the podcast the more numbers we get the podcast it allows us to get sponsors it allows us to get more people behind the geek buddies so if you support us go over and subscribe to the podcast you don't even have to download the episodes just subscribe and that will give us the numbers we need hopefully to get more and more sponsors behind us and supporting us so i don't have to shill for random products like witch witch when we're on doing these reviews or these shows so uh, all right let's get the hell out of here thank you all so so much for taking time once again and uh we'll see you next week uh with our brand new uh, episode of the geek buddies and also uh i think we'll be doing what we're doing no i think we're i think we might be doing something down the road as well but definitely we'll be back to do reviews for hawkeye down which is very very soon and just around the corner and we'll see you next time for and oh yeah go ahead mike book of boba and Book of Boba, which is coming in December as well. So look forward to that and so many other things coming here from the Geek Buddies. One last programming note for those who follow me. I will be in 30 minutes on the Cinephiles YouTube channel going live with Steve Morris celebrating Ooh. our 250th <laughs> episode oh of the gosh. Cinephiles, answering questions from the fans live. That is and a busy, busy, yeah. busy, busy man. <laughs> That's right. It's true. Very true. <laughs> All right. Y'all take care of yourselves. Be well. We'll talk to you next time for another brand new episode from The... Geek Buddies! <laughs> <laughs>